What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Real Bodybuilding Podcast. This is episode number 158, and I am here with Big Mike Van Wick. How are you, man? Good, man. How are you? Good. How's I just dog? Dude, yeah, we talk <laughs> for those that don't know, for those that don't know, we had this lined up for Friday. Um, but I had to reschedule because my dog has got crazy allergies. Honestly, the vet was of no use. I don't know if you've ever experienced, yeah. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I went to the vet. He checks over my dog. He's like, your dog's great. He's like, I've had other dogs here that are way worse. Just, I'm like, that doesn't mean anything. I'm like, just because some other dog is way worse. <laughs> that yeah. I had one missing a leg the other day. Yours is good. <laughs> That's what I was thinking to myself. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. He, he offered me this uh, this medication, Cytopoint, I think it was called. And when I well, read up, they didn't give you the they didn't give you the Apoquil. They give that to my dogs every time. I was just like, "What the fuck, bro? Like, is it, it's actually, not working, man." <laughs> somebody somebody recommended that. Is it not doing anything? No, it works. I mean, I have a I have a bully, and she's like, she's literally a bubble child. Like, she, if she gets anything other than her food, she's like, I tried her on raw when she was little, and her like patches of fur were like falling out. And it's like, really? fuck, man. Like, it's been like a. Probably spent over like ten grand on that dog dealing with all the skin condition stuff, and she had an emergency uh, emergency spay back in the summer, like right after I got my hip surgery. Like a week later, she had this crazy infection, had to rush her to an emergency vet. It was like ten grand, she had to, like take all her take all her bits out, and it was bad. Vets are like they're the bane of my existence. I don't like. <laughs> I love them, but you know what I mean, like, it's like fuck. One of, and you, uh, they just have you by the balls too, right? Because you don't know. know, and you just do anything for your dog, like anything. They could tell me you got to give me like your right testicle if your dog. I'm like, yeah, I take it. Like, <laughs> I'm good, man. Like, yeah, whatever no. gets my dog better. But I was so frustrated. You know, at one point, the vet actually said to me, "He's like, he's like, you know, you got Google. You can you can look it up if you can find something better." I'm like, what the fuck? You're telling me to go That's to Google? Your job, dude. <laughs> I know. I'm like, so he he What'd asked you go me to school for. I know. He told me to take sight a point, and I look it up. He leaves the room. I go, I'm going to look it up. So he leaves the room yeah. and I look it up. And the first thing that pops up is side point killed my dog. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, dude, fucking. So anyway, we, we left there and I'm still looking for new things, but Apoquil was one that was recommended to me. So, yeah. I mean, it works, it works pretty well. It's just that we were, we kind of got in this bad habit of like, we saw the condition, the symptoms getting better. So it was just kind of like, I don't want my dog on this all the time. I don't think. And, yeah. kind of comes seasonally with her so then she'll flare up again her nose gets dry she starts itching her in between her paws and it's just like fuck man like how old is she here we go again my boy should be seven this year is it the only is it, is it the only one or do you have another one well, i got a french bulldog and i got a little pomeranian that i inherited okay. from a friend <laughs> so you got three dogs yeah yeah Okay, good. So I want to ask you, I know we're not talking about bodybuilding, but sometimes this podcast is not about bodybuilding. So I want to ask you, I was thinking about getting a second dog and I'm yeah. like, I'm a little torn because, <laughs> well, no, cause I'm a little torn. Cause I feel like the one I have is so attached to me. He'll be jealous. Yeah. And I'm like, that's, I don't a, know. that's what I thought when I got my, I got my bully and I had had my French bulldog. She was like five at this point. And I was like, Oh, she's not gonna be too happy, but she's kind of independent, does her own thing anyway. But she didn't like she didn't like my bully for like two years. Really? Like she just like turn her back and walk away. And now they like sleep together and do all this yeah. shit. So they they get over it. But what French about, bulldogs are the worst, so they're stubborn as fuck. But what about the double hard. double food, double picking up shit, double all that stuff? Is that didn't bother you? No. Really, I love dogs. I'm fucking. I literally, if I had enough, if I had enough space and I had enough free time, I'd probably have like twenty dogs on a fucking farm somewhere, just like running around. <laughs> You'd be like one of those like people. Dogs that, better uh, than people. Yeah, like, yeah. A, like an orphanage. You just have them for a little while, and yeah, it'd be the dog whisperer, but I have no control over my animals whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Okay, last thing about dogs. I'm just curious because I've gone on this kick of watching all the police dog sh police dog videos where they like train them to do mm. all this shit like perfectly do you ever get into that or you don't bother no my dogs are so so badly behaved <laughs> <laughs> they come they come when they want to and then like all right yeah. really you don't give a shit that doesn't you don't care i mean they're like they're pretty like they're <laughs> loved right so they're just they're happy dogs so like yeah sometimes like my my pit bull is like super friendly so she's she looks like a fucking like great white shark on land like she's 
and she runs towards people because she loves everyone and they're like holy fuck like yeah and i'm yeah. like it's okay it's okay <laughs> but if yeah. she sees someone new she can't she won't leave them and it's just like they think she's going to attack eventually but <laughs> yeah. to go like literally pick her up and carry her away from everyone so it's like other than that it's, i love having dogs so it's good yeah to like have, have as many as you can uh i wanted to have you on because you've kind of exploded onto the scene after being away for a little while and become uh super popular in the training space and you have a way about you with uh the way you talk is kind of like a no bullshit this is what i think i don't care if you like it or not kind of thing yeah. and, but it also comes with a lot of insight behind it so it's it's been welcomed um yeah i mean i think it just it's just kind of how i like anyone who knows me in person i'm kind of the same way i'm not like like you see these clips of me online, it seems like I'm mad 24 seven. I mean, I'm not <laughs> walking around <laughs> smiling and shit, but I mean, I'm not like mad and I'm not genuinely mad in the clip. It's just like, you know, as well as like anybody, probably if you're passionate about something, it just kind of comes out and yeah. wherever it comes out. Right. It's not like, yeah. yeah, it's like, I'm passionate about this sport and I'm a big fan of like bodybuilding and just lifting in general. And it's like, even like to get, off topic a bit like when i first moved back to canada and i started competing up here like you were one of the guys i looked up to and i spoke to this i spoke on ron partless podcast with this too like how when i was competing you were ahead of me and so were guys like you and ben you had kind of yeah. like done what you did and you guys were on the scene and like really fucking making a big impact so i was like man i want to get to like where these yeah. guys are like especially yeah. when i'm a canadian guy right yeah so it was yeah. like i just i had like a like i always followed you when i was coming up especially when i first went back to canada and like we ran into each other a few times here and i remember i ran into you like at the stratford when i yeah. did a guest pose there and i saw you and we was i were laughing about no no you were a good guy man. <laughs> we were like you made a comment that i should i should do whatever i can to beat a certain someone and i was like i'll do my best <laughs> but i didn't but i didn't <laughs> like, we were in a full agreement of who we wanted to yeah, yeah. Not i think see i do well i think you know? i remember i can't remember that I, la I laughed at that i remember i looked at darren and i'm like yeah he gets it <laughs> i always felt you know it's funny thinking back to those i always felt like you didn't like me for some reason oh i, I was always like, like i've I've, I've, and I've told people like I've had like people have strong opinions about me and I'm sure people have strong opinions yeah. about you just like because they make their own they see you and then they make their own version of what you are to yeah. them right and so it's yeah. like I've never and I've like I just was always like yeah, I never really like that's literally my interaction with you was that yeah, backstage yeah. thing and I thought it was awesome I was like that's yeah. fucking cool as shit like we both <laughs> we're both on the same team here <laughs> um okay so <laughs> speaking of back then I remember you coming up I remember you being a beast I remember seeing you know, the heavy dumbbell pressing and all that with Darren. And yeah, I wish I could take back that. <laughs> okay. Right now. Well, Especially this week. I've been like suffering this week. I don't know. My body hates me this like last two weeks. It's like, how how old are you now? I'm 42. Oh, okay. So I'm only a couple of years older than you. Yeah. So, but like this week, for some reason, my body's just like, fuck you, dude. Like, did, fuck everything. <laughs> did, you have a, did you have a heavy training week last week? No, man. Cause I, I don't train like anywhere near like I used to. I'm just kind of getting in there, getting blood in the muscle and yeah. doing my own thing. And I came off, I had a hip replacement like uh, five months ago now. Yeah. And that was my second hip operation. Right. So I'm just like, I'm just happy to be Moving doing around. what I'm doing. Man. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah. cool, yeah. man. I can move again. No pain. And it's like, next thing you know, like last week, my knee started hurting. I'm like, what the fuck? And now I'm like, can't straighten my knee fully. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Like my shoulder fucking hurts. It's like, it's like when the all oh, one one thing's taken care of your body's like oh what about that <laughs> it's like, oh and this and that <laughs> it's like it's the post 40 year old bodybuilding body that's like, what it is man you know, literally went boxing you couldn't even call it boxing it was me moving around with gloves on my hand yeah and i was like and i felt great and the next day i wake up i'm like oh my legs a little tight and i'm like saturday happens. morning i wake up i'm like what happened to my knee <laughs> Why doesn't this thing bend anymore? <laughs> you can't like, box. You can't box, man. You're still a big guy. What do you weigh? What do you weigh in and out? Uh, right now I'm like I would say like I'm two ninety, yeah. two ninety two. You can't box. Yeah, <laughs> that was literally. It wasn't. I don't call it boxing. It was not that you can't physically that, in the yeah. space. <laughs> not that you can't. Not that you can't yeah. box, but just the motion of like the athletic. Yeah, yeah. We're not built for that shit. Yeah. Um. No, but going back. I remember you training back then. I remember you slanging like heavyweight at three six five and doing all that. Mm -hmm. Where did do you you played football first, right? Or am I wrong about that? Yeah, no, I played football in college. 
and I had a, I think a lot of my, a lot of the shit that I did to my body, like the foundation of what the shit that went wrong started then. And I just like being young and stupid, like, Oh, my body's fine. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. My body was fucked like back then. So it's like my, now my body's like, Oh, you did that. And you lifted stupid heavy weight. Yeah. So like, now you're going to, now we're gonna fucking fuck you. <laughs> like, aside welcome from, new hip. <laughs> aside from the pain you're feeling, though, did you do you regret lifting like that? Because I mean, you put on a ton of mass. You're a mass, you're like a really big guy. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I honestly don't know. Like, I think like I think lifting like that created like a pretty good solid foundation of mass for me. But I don't think I think I was kind of in a rush. And I think that foundation probably would have come on if I had taken it a little and like taken that in the smarter direction instead of just like, I, I wasn't going in there every time I lifted to try and get a heavier weight or to try and bench more or whatever. It's just, I had like a good bench and I had this history of like having a very strong bench. I, there wasn't a weight that I can remember back then that I took off that I was nervous about pressing. Like I would literally like look forward to the heavier sets because I was like, oh, I can, Yeah. now yeah. I'm going to move something, right? So it's yeah. like, I think it was like, I think I had to have that stuff to almost understand, like one, to build that foundation and two, to understand, like, there's also another way to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's also another way to go about it. And it doesn't, I think I kind of would have like kind of sprinkled that in a little more strategically and kind of really cruise the volume road that I kind of preach now and just let things kind of develop over time and with the work yeah. ethic. But I think I was just like in a, because you know like i do you're strong as fuck too it's like when you lift in this way it's like it's fucking exhilarating yeah yeah <laughs> there's a it's not boring <laughs> yeah i tell people to have fun when they train i said it's a big factor that keeps you going for years and years and years is yeah, yeah. just having fun but you did you, were you working with darren at that time yeah How i was like i literally moved back i moved back from uh i went to school in rhode island and i graduated i was there for a couple of years just kind of like fucking around working after college and i I did a couple of shows there just to kind of understand, like I did horrible. My first show I had no idea what I was doing. The next show I came third in super heavies and I knew it was something I wanted to pursue. Cause I'd always been into bodybuilding even when I was playing football. Like I yeah. wanted to, I was like, how do I look like that and play? It's like, you don't. Like, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, so I'm like, you know, I came back here and I was like, man, I need like a good friend of mine. Joe was kind of teaching me the, the ropes down in Rhode Island and, I didn't have him anymore, obviously, because I moved back up here. So I was like looking for someone to kind of train with. And I didn't know anybody anymore because I've been away from college and home for so long. So I ended up getting a job at Extreme Fitness through a buddy of mine. I don't know if you ever met Leor Goldstein. He was a pro back in the day from Israel, this guy. But Leor so. was like, Leor just like, he's like, oh, you're already in the gym anyway. He's like, you need a job. Go fucking train people. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I've never done that. But yeah. <laughs> so I went to Extreme. And then uh, I don't know if you know, like, like good life wherever these change gyms when you first take the job they give you they you should you train someone someone shadows you and sees yeah. if you're any fucking good at what you do yeah, aaron yeah. shadowed me oh okay okay the first day and i was like who is this guy like i was like this guy is fucking first of all no one's that nice that's not <laughs> fucked up like he was just like over the top like how oh, are you in the like, and then i come to know him later on and he's that person that's who he yeah. is right and i'm yeah. like but i remember until the guy I, he was done he was like give me all this praise and i'm like this guy's blowing smoke up my fucking ass yeah. i'm not yeah. i'm nowhere near that good and i'm like yeah i yeah. went into the office after the manager i'm like what's wrong with that guy and he's like <laughs> darren i'm like i'm like yeah what's up what's up with that dude is he fucking with me <laughs> yeah, like, yeah he's like oh that's him man yeah so i was like training in the gym and i was like still trying to keep up with my like i was going to strictly fitness i remember strictly fitness back in the day i was going there because they had 200 pound dumbbells so i was trying yeah. to keep up with this whole like i'm gonna fucking lift Im big image, yeah, yeah 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 yeah. so i'm like going there because i'm like they have the biggest weights in the city and, and darren just was like yeah i would see him train it was just the style of movement i'd never i was like what is the shit that you're doing like why are you like pushing people's heads back and like getting them to like rock in these i'm like what is this shit right just lift the fucking weight and he's he's like just give me like give me a week he's like let yeah. me show you some back stuff and then like if you don't want to fuck with me don't fuck with me and i'm like okay and he did some low lat shit with me and i was like wow well i don't even know what that was i just felt but yeah i want to keep feeling it so yeah let's just do it and i just abandoned like i was still lifting heavy and i push him like oh, i want to fuck with this today i want to fucking squat that out. and he's like oh, okay but he's like fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. chill out easy. like yeah darren's not the biggest dude and he's trying to like take off 
yeah. five and a quarter on incline. Like, oh my God, please God. <laughs> so for people who so don't just, know, but before we go on, just because we keep talking about Darren was Mike and many others coach, uh, yeah. many other successful uh, amateur bodybuilders coach back uh, in the day in the, in the Toronto area. Yeah. And then um, he unfortunately pr- passed uh, probably a, a while back now, 10, more than 10 years ago. Like 2011. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but is that, so I worked with him for a week and I got that same experience. Like he was very complimentary, very like confidence mm-hmm. boosting, very, um, very specific, yeah. very, very specific in his movement patterns. So is that where like the people, the things that people are seeing now that you're doing on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram, is that all, not all, but is that a lot of it based on what Darren taught you? Yeah. I mean, a lot of it, like I, I'm the type of person, like, I'm, like, if I say, I'm going to train with you and we're going to do this, whatever, I'm going to listen to what you tell me. I'm going to pay attention to what you said, how you said it, and when you said it. I'm not going to, there's no, I'm not leaving things up to interpretation. Like, I'm going to be a sponge and take it in. So I spent like probably five years with Darren, like four years with Darren every day of my life. Right. So bringing him out of like the dude was like, he would have like horrible anxiety attacks and just like he went through, we went through all kinds of shit together. And just like, I, every time I was in the gym with him, I learned something and I just like, I was having an impression on him because I was like, don't be afraid to, to push the intensity. Don't be afraid to do this. Whereas he was kind of like, in that mode of like let's just do this i'm like no man you need to have the form and your techniques but you have to push like it can't just be this like little dinky stuff like we all see girls doing like banded kickbacks for three hours at one then thinking their glutes can get big it's like there has to be some other stimulus there that's like causing stress right yeah so i think he had we rubbed off on each other and sometimes we literally go to the gym and just like we're gonna do back we just fuck around with shit like the whole time we just be like let's change this hand position let's like lower the yeah. seat let's lean back on this angle let's not let our elbow drop let's pull like you know what i mean like yeah and all that shit stuck with me and then like anybody over time you're like i spent my time away from him and i a lot of a, a lot of his weakness like he wasn't really good with legs yeah in the sense of like because he didn't have much like wealth of knowledge when it came to legs it was just like you know kind of do legs but this is like back was this thing and chest was this thing and these were his these were his movements right so i spent my time away when i was away from him, like understanding legs and trying to get it to like how do i get these shitty legs i have to grow because yeah. they're not growing doing the shit that i'm doing right so yeah yeah i was like playing with foot placement and stuff like that but when i even doing that my view of how i should do it came from his ideology of like let's put let's put it on the muscle let's relax the joint let's understand how we're moving and yeah. maybe shorten ranges and things like that so he was like obviously a massive a massive influence on what i do and yeah. i think i like i'd love i'd love it if he's still around that he could see like what's going on now because i think if he was still around he'd be yeah charles glass level shit right so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so when you work with darren you were competing as an amateur still you turned pro how long after you guys started working together uh we competed in the first the first year I came home. I did level one at the. What did I do? I tried to do all three levels in one year, because I was like, I just want to try and get like to Canada's. Was there four so level? Was there four? There's three, three levels. That, there's two. The level one, level two, then Ontario's, and then yeah. Canada, so there's four right? levels. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I did the level one, and then I did level two, and then I tried to make Ontario's that year, but my body just kind of shut down on me, and it was like, no, it's not happening. So. Yeah, we did the Ontario's the next year, uh, won that super heavies, and then two thousand nine, so three years together, we I won my pro card. That's pretty incredible, man! To get your pro card. How old were you when you got your pro card? I was twenty eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show some photos. Let me know which one is which. Like, what is what show is this? Uh, I think that was like Toronto before I ended up in the hospital for the fucking, <laughs> yeah, that didn't go well. What uh, happened? What happened in Toronto? I just was like, obviously know. we're talking about the, the Toronto pro here. So yeah. This- yeah. So I did the, the first pro show I did was New York pro. I shit the bed at that show just cause I was like, Darren, like we were training for it. He wasn't like too keen on me doing that show. And looking back, I can really fucking understand why. <laughs> it's like, why? You're about why? to get your fucking, I just wasn't ready. Oh, it was, too, it was big, like, too big a show, yeah. 
Yeah, but it goes my my mentality has been like my whole life. Like even if I'm gonna go and get my ass kicked, at least I can see what it is that kicked my ass. Okay, like I can visually see that that's what I need to get to. Cause it's like you, you would know more than anybody You've competed at such high level. Like when you, and I tell these guys all the time that are younger, I'm like, when you see what the top level looks like, you yeah. start to really understand how far you are, or how close yeah. you are. Yeah. yeah. And I understood how far I fucking was. Cause yeah. I was like, man, like I do not look like Dennis Wolf. <laughs> at all. And Rolly Winkler's tricep is the size of my fucking chest. And I'm yeah. like, Okay, man, like, cool, I'm having fun, like, not having fun, because who cares, like, getting their ass kicked, but it was like, you know, like, now I'm motivated to go back, right, and yeah. really get after it, so it's like, that's kind of how I worked, and then Toronto Pro, I just fucking, I was, everything was going fine, I went out to get a, I went out to have a cheat meal, like, the night before, like, I usually have, like, a burger and fries, just because, like, that's what I would always do, and I ended up getting a burger and fries, so I didn't even know where from, it was near the convention center, I honestly forget. Like it was like a, I just took it out from a restaurant and I ate like half of it. And it was like, it felt like rubbery texture in my mouth when I was eating it. Oh, but yeah. I don't know if that's because I hadn't had something like that in so long or it was just yeah. a shitty frozen baddie. Yeah. So I ate like half of it and I was like, man, I'll fuck this shit. And I had some fries and I'm like, I'm going to go to sleep. And I woke up and at like two in the morning and the room was just like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I just like stumbled to the bathroom. I must have thrown up like 10 times. Holy but fuck. I stood up and I'm fucked up and I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, you're fucking shredded. And I was like, <laughs> shredded. Like <laughs> I, I had veins in my like down yeah, my yeah. stomach. And I'm like, I'm yeah. like, oh my God. This is amazing. <laughs> I remember I called Darren. I'm like, bro, you gotta come up here. I threw up, but it's it's okay because I'm it's shredded. Out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he comes up, he's like, you do look good. He's like, go yeah. back to sleep, try and eat. And then like, yeah. but every time I would try and eat, it was like I could chew something 20 times and I couldn't get it down. I was just you know, like and yeah. my heart started fucking going crazy because i was already diuretic at that time yeah and i yeah, threw yeah. up everything i had in my fucking stomach so you kept so going. i'm like still looping with the diuretics yeah. and i'm not eating or drinking and just downhill i ended up so so you I didn't up, make it to the so you end up super I, flat at prejudging no at oh, prejudging, this... it wasn't bad i was like i was in the second call out i felt like i was like i didn't i don't even remember i remember i didn't know where i was i was like literally like just <laughs> like looking around like what the fuck's happening right i saw frank yeah. backstage and i was like hey he's like you're right i'm like oh yeah <laughs> like, I'm fine. but the next night when or like uh, just didn't get any it didn't get any better um if yeah. i was a month and a moron i would have just started like pounding drink literally putting salt in my mouth and drinking yeah yeah to try yeah. and hydrate myself but yeah i ended up having to knock i couldn't go to the night show because i was just on laying on the convention center floor like fucking tweaking out like and so i ended up at the hospital with a bunch of fluid in me and it just didn't go well so yeah <laughs> I've, i wasn't I've that happened yeah. to me in Dallas, 2014, and the same. Uh-huh. I had the same exact reaction. I threw up. A, I don't think I was as sick, but I did throw up a few times. Uh-huh. And I, I woke up the morning of the show just peeled. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> take me to stage now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was able. I was able to. I, I think because I wasn't as sick, I was able to get some food down and hold that yeah. condition. I ended up in second place at the show because I was able to like. But that's the most shredded I ever was. I'm like, okay, this is the trick. I got to throw up. A few times <laughs> the, day be- the day before You're the show. Just walking here. Oh, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm getting shredded, man. <laughs> so what, is, <laughs> what is uh I'm trying to find the Canadian Nationals photos. What is this from? Oh, uh, I think a that's a fucking, st- You're a big fucking dude, man. That's a edited shot from Toronto. Someone fucking made me look way leaner. Look how fucking punched in my side is. Like my waist is not that small. What do you mean? Oh, what these guys do to these these pictures, man? It's because you're <laughs> Look pushing... at the fucking drasticness of that lat, like waist tie. <laughs> Fuck out of here, bro. That's not my waist. Yeah, this is New York, I think. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, that was a fucking shit show. But the Canadian ones are they're probably like more. Yeah, you know, there's like a dark stage on the ground, and there's like one banner behind it. So, what was your best body part? You think? Because I know you talk a lot about back, and your back looks super thick. Is that your is that your favorite body part, or would it be shoulders? Yeah. Or... Back. No, I was back probably. Yeah. yeah, you seem to take a lot of pride in your in your back training. Yeah, I just, I just it's not even I take pride in it. It's just a sense of like I just I see so many people fucking butchering it and trying and just confusing people because it's like I wonder yeah. how many I wonder how many guys out there could have like fantastic backs if they just like let go of this nonsense they're being fed like and understand that like you're it's okay to move your back when you train it. It's like let it open, let it close, like that it's just I, fascinating to me i've always been told to 
like you said, open as much as possible. So like when Samson was mm. down here, when Samson yeah. Samson came down to Windsor, I had him doing like extreme stretching kind of shit, mm-hmm. like with each rep. Um, mm-hmm. But then you see people say, no, that's not going to work because now you're using the shoulder, using the Terry's, you're not really using the lat. And it's like, so I noticed something at this year's Olympia and previous years in the last like five years, maybe I feel like there's not as many great backs as, as there were 10 or 20 years ago. 100%. So what is it? What are guys? There's a doing? lot of guys who think they have great backs and they don't. <laughs> I, I, like, they're just like pulling lat spreads like they're like they're Ronnie. And it's like, man, that ain't that ain't it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's some notables like, like you oh, know, yeah. Brandon Curry's got a great back and Derek's you know, got a great back. <laughs> Derek, Fantastic. Derek's got a great back, too. So no. what is it that you think this generation of lifters is doing that's not giving the stage shots, all those great backs that we're used to seeing, what is it that they're doing wrong? I think it's like, like you said with Samson, it's just like this understanding that like it's to be able to relax in that fully lengthened position. And when it's yeah. fully lengthened, it's not like I'm just arbitrarily letting my hand get pulled out. It's like, yeah, we understand that like the back is caving in and the, the like the, that the shoulder is the one that's caving in and rounding around. I'm not trying to just reach my hand out. Yeah. I'm trying to rock up through ter- sternum and tuck that shoulder back. Right. Yeah. So then we get that whole opening effect of the lat and like my humerus is pulling my lat around and back down around my into my spine, right? So yeah, yeah. I just think the guys are just they're in such a it's just they're in such a fucking huff about like I want to be able to do heavy stuff all the time, but it's like it's like you have to understand they have to sometimes you have to be like smart about how you're doing shit. Like yeah, it's like I say to people all the time, if I'm gonna like if I want to kill something, like I want to kill a deer, I don't fucking walk up to it and shoot a shotgun at it and hope that I get it. I'm going to yeah. sniper that fucking thing from like 30 feet away or whatever and yeah. Yeah. shoot it and kill it one shot, right? So yeah. it's just like, it's just coming in with more of a precise looking uh, attitude to things and understanding that stretching is your friend when it comes back because I can't fully open my lat or even open my back and let the muscles relax and grab before I open it up and stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm always keeping it like half half opened and then i'm just rocking my arms in and off of it it's like yeah. nothing's happening and you can see the guys that are doing that because they yes. sit up tall and they go to pull and their shoulder never moves position yeah it's just yeah. an arm pull and they yeah. have massive biceps yeah yeah it's well i think like, yeah, you... the reason i see it is the reason i've paid attention to that more than anything is john's one of john meadows like philosophies was that extra stretch so like mm-hmm. we would like we would sit down on a dy row and he would let my arms come out on a ham on a, that hammer strength DY row, and he would he would literally pull on the handles to yeah. like o- open up my more back stretch. even more. Yeah. yeah, and then he'd be like, "Okay." This guys, a lot of guys think that when you tell them like reach out, they think they're reaching out and they still have like three inches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I, I made a I put up a clip about this the other day. How life? I was joking like life is a game of inches. It's like this understanding that if I set off a prime row here any chest supported row, this is like. These inches right here where this happens yes. are the inches that matter. Yeah. Because that transfer of load, like our understanding shoulder retracting yeah. and shoulder rolling forward yeah. is the key to all your back problems. Because even if you're doing shit fucked up and even if you're doing shit too heavy, the range of motion isn't great. At least you're causing that transfer and that lift and the back's grabbing. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm at least engaging that posterior chain of my body. It's not just rigidly holding weight and pulling to it. You know what I mean? So recently on a episode of uh bro chat or whatever I was doing with the guys, we got in a kind of heated debate about training and mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't want to go back to it, but I want to ask you just about philosophy in general. Why has like, we have decades of things of seeing things work. And mm-hmm. I feel like this generation is saying, no, those things work right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're almost yeah. saying like, no, no, we got, the, we have the right it's- way. Yeah, it's like I, I forget who I said this to. Like I think I was talking to Dave Tate and I was like, it's like people have forgotten everything that existed t- up to like like 10 years, like 10 years back. Everything yeah. past that didn't exist. Yeah. It's like you guys don't understand. There's a wealth, like people have been doing like that's why when I say stuff sometimes I feel like an idiot because I'm like, I don't need to say this, do I? Like I don't need to repeat this because everyone like people like you. People in, yeah. uh, know know what I'm talking about. This isn't yeah. fucking new to you, but this yeah. new generation of people are like, this is insane. It's like, yeah, no, man. <laughs> like, do you know what blood and guts is? Yeah. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what like 
Do you yeah. know any of these people that yeah. you claim to be such a fan of the sport, yet you know nothing about the history of it yeah. or the people yeah. that existed and came before you? Like, like I saw a video of the other great, um, you know, that Tom Platt's like leg extension where he kind of like flips back and yeah. fires out, right? Yep, yep. This girl's doing it like it's new. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's yeah. fucking Tom Platt's, man. Like, <laughs> you didn't make that up. Like, I hate to burst your bubble, but that's not a new technique you just came up with. Like, I, I originated just... it somewhere. I feel like almost people have been fed too much information to the point where they've forgotten just how easy it is or not easy, yeah. but kind of the stuff already worked. And so they're like, no, mm-hmm. no, we have all this new information and we're supposed to evolve, but I don't see an evolution. That's the difference. No, I see I, a decline. I mean, I, see I don't a decline in physiques. I don't, I don't know if I see a decline. I, I don't want to say that. I think these guys are, are good. Like, we no, when I say that, I don't. I don't mean that the. I don't mean that the height of the sport. Yeah, I mean is your your average person in the gym, like yeah, avid lifter, like amateur, yeah. like aspiring bodybuilders. Yeah, I don't see these guys like it's like I'm sure you can. You're just like me. You could walk into a gym, wherever it might be. Like yeah. we walk into a gym together in Fort Lauderdale, let's say, and we, me and you can be like, does anyone in here have it? Yeah. Like, does anyone here have the genetic or the physique to, like, actually do something? And you can scan gyms, and you're like, not a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there might be guys in there that are big and walking around like, "Mm -hmm." and it's like, but do you have what it takes? Because I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. I had it to get a pro card. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't going to be Mr. Olympia. Yeah. But, like, I know what it looks like because I've been around it enough, and I understand what, like, what the physique is. Yeah, yeah. Especially because I know I don't have it. So I must know what it is. Or I'd be yeah. delusional being like, oh, I still got it. I got a chance. The only reason why it didn't work out for me is because of this, right? Yeah, like yeah, Those yeah. guys who are like, I played football, but I had kids, and then I couldn't play anymore. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> fuck out of here, bro. You couldn't play football. <laughs> so what happened? So you turned pro. You did How many shows did you do before you decided to hang it up? I did the New York Pro, and then I did the Toronto Pro the next year. And then um, I was just getting to the point where – I did not I did the Toronto Pro. I got sick. Whatever. I ended up going to Vegas for the Olympia to do the like just be in the animal cage, the mini yeah. cage they had. Yeah. And they're like, oh man, do a fucking demo for us. And I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Like everyone here is the strongest fucker in the world. Like yeah. I'm gonna be here. Like I can curl forties. Like yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'll press two hundred pound dumbbells. That was the fucking biggest mistake of life because when I did that, I fucking popped my pack. No way. Yeah, and I'm like, so you know, it was worth the fucking trip to Vegas. And well, I can so imagine. Like, I can imagine when you're in that that cage, did you don't have time to like warm up properly, and you're not hydrated. You're standing. No, around. I was so dehydrated, and I was fucking sick as a dog. I got oh. sick on the. I got sick up in the air and landed even sicker, oh. like sore throat. And I looked at them, and I was like, "Do I have to do this?" They're like, "Well, you know, just see how you feel." And you know, you get in there, you're like, "I'm fucking fine." Yeah. So I'm like, my shoulder's fucked because I'm an idiot. Like I've said this before. I put fucking three cc's in this shoulder and three cc's in this shoulder because I'm going to an expo and apparently that's going to make me look fucking bigger than everyone. So I'm like, yeah, that's you're a good already, idea. You're already 300 fucking pounds. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah well, I could be like 302. By, yeah. you know what I mean? So I'm like, and in my mind, I'm like, that's a good idea. I go up in the air. They swell up the fucking balloons. Oh, and I'm like, no. holy fuck. So I can't move my shoulders. And I'm like, and this shoulder is already like it's a mess now, but it was it was been a mess for a long time. So I'm like, oh, this isn't good. So I picked up the 150s, did them no problem. I actually felt fine. And I'm like, well, what do you have? I'm usually do like 150s and I'll do 180s and I'll do 200s. And they're like, yeah. we don't have anything else. Oh no! I'm like, well, fuck, man. I'm not gonna do the 150s <laughs> again and waste my fucking yeah energy. Yeah. So yeah. I kicked the 200s, dropped them the first time. Should have said fuck it then because I've never dropped a dumbbell in my life ever. Yeah. yeah. And fucking, I'll get it this time. Kicked it up as soon as I turned. Oh. I was like, I just dropped the thing. I'm like, oh, this is fucking great. <laughs> but that's but, the, yeah. but you know, that's not your fault. I, I, you know what, man? The pressure of being, especially that cage. I know that fucking cage. Oh, this this was like the Arnold cage. So it was like a yeah. a pathetic version of the Arnold. No, of, but I mean I've, of the Arnold cage. Yeah. But I've seen the Arnold cage. It still gets hype. There's a lot of people around it. There's yeah. a bunch of power. The Olympia, the Olympia one's like the size of a little booth with like a little cage yeah. around the outside. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, and there's like 20 people that are like, oh, I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I think I, I think you know you're working for for people and they're paying you and you're like, yeah, I want to impress everybody. Yeah, so but it doesn't help too that you're around like all these strong ass fucking dudes. You don't want to look like a bitch. Like, 
That's right. Maybe one of them can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I look like I can. <laughs> you know, the guy before me just he's like 160 pounds. He just pulled 800 pounds, dropped it. I'm like, oh, I'm next, yeah. am I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck. So yeah, you so pop- I tore my yeah, I popped my pec, and then I was, obviously had to get that fixed. So I was like, all on like the I'm on the road to recovery. I'm gonna yeah. fucking this, yeah. and I was like, maybe I should fucking get on the road to making money because I'm yeah. fucking broke and I have any money. Were you broke? What was was the animal contract not cutting it? It was horrible. I got four hundred bucks a month. Really, three hundred bucks in supplements, manufacturer price. I mean, like retail price, not wholesale. <laughs> I, don't even I get like two. I get two products, bro. Like fucking a protein and an omega. <laughs> oh no! Oh, thanks, guys. I was so what, like, were, uh, what were you doing on the side to make pay, like you know pay for the bills? I was living in New Jersey at the time because that's how I met them. So I was just like training people here and there. And I, I for the for the first part of me living in New Jersey, I was still with I was still with Iovate because I they yeah. six star had signed me. I remember I, that. like had a yeah. I had a before and after. And in the contract, it says, if you turn pro, we automatically sign you. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, sweet. I'm getting yeah. 2000 bucks for doing nothing. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And a whole bunch of product I'm not using. Yeah. I was like, uh, so that kind of cut out halfway through when they made that massive cut and kind of killed everyone. Yeah. Because yeah. I guess they had to sign Phil or Jay or somebody. Yeah, they, was, cut, <laughs> they cut everybody, man. They cut yeah, me, like, me see you, losers. <laughs> Cedric. And they fucking cut Cedric. They cut so many people. They were like, I think it was all a total of like, 13 people they're like yeah we got to make room for phil go fuck yourselves holy fuck you like, oh. just got rid of us us pathetic dudes at the bottom they probably would got, got rid of everybody man um yeah. so then you went to animal and you're training and getting a little bit of cash so that's all right yeah so, i was just i was living in new jersey and i don't know if you've ever been to have you ever been to signature fitness in new jersey yeah where clarita trains no it's a really good gym yeah if you ever get a chance to go it's a good gym yeah, yeah. i love that gym that was like that's probably like as, growing up as a bodybuilder and coming up, I love that place. They had like the best juice bar too. <laughs> it's like this place is amazing. <laughs> where are you? Where are you originally from? I'm from Toronto. You're from Toronto, so you just lived yep. in all these. You just lived in these different places just because it was interesting. Yeah, like, or no, I went to I went down to Rhode Island on a football scholarship, so I was there for school. Yeah, and then uh, the New Jersey thing happened because I met a girl and I was an idiot and thought I should move down there. That was. But it was good because I met Animal and it was like, yeah, everything happens, you know, for a reason. So I met a lot of good people through that. And then I just, after that, I kind of, that shit fizzled out, obviously. And then I moved back to Toronto. And like I said, I was just competing here again and just existing. And yeah, I just, after the Toronto Pro Show, I was like, like I said, I was, I wasn't broke. Like I wasn't on the fucking street, but I really, yeah. I wasn't succeeding in life, nor was I financially comfortable. You know what I mean? So I, I was like, man, I need to hustle and get some jobs. So I was fucking training people all day. Then I was bouncing at a strip club at night. Fucking. Then I was bouncing at fucking nightclubs on the weekend and just trying to like hustle, make put more hustle into that side of my life and do like make as much money as I could. Yeah. Without having to be a fucking drug dealer or fucking something. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This fucking sport is expensive as shit, man. So it's like, and I don't really see it paying off, right? So. It's like, I just, I just kind of knew back around that time. I was like, man, I don't think this is like, like, even if I was like your level, Cedric's level, like I just, I wasn't. So I'm like, I, I, I'm honest with myself and I'm just like, man, I'm just kind of a big guy. And why don't I use that in somewhere that's going to actually yeah. become in useful, right? Like throwing people downstairs and <laughs> smashing them on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys. So you just made a cal- calculated decision. What was that? 2012, 2013? You kind of yeah, just made a decision there. to like say, you know what? I'm not I'm not getting any yeah, further. Like I always it. I always thought in my mind, like, oh, I'm gonna because you can always come back to it. I mean, it's obviously yeah. not gonna probably go that well. It's like if you didn't do well when you're younger, why are you doing well when you're older? Mm-hmm. Type of thing. But then I so I was coming back when I was kind of just living and training people. I had a lot more fun. I actually enjoyed training people more than I did even competing because I like to see like like people doing well and just going through that whole journey with them. Right. So yeah. And I was boxing again, fucking pop my bicep on a fucking bag. And I was like, well, this is probably the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> so I got that fixed. And then fucking, it's just like, I ended up like over that, over that time frame when I kind of stopped bodybuilding, I, I was in the, I got introduced to Drake and I was, well, not Drake personally, but I got introduced to his people and, yeah, just kind of worked my way into like being in the rotation with their security just through mutual friends and then 
so I kind of just kind of dedicated myself to that lifestyle and was on the road a lot and traveling. So what's that like? And I was actually making money, actually making money for the first time. <laughs> what's it like being a bodyguard? I guess that's what I'll call it or security. That's what you want to call it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's security for, I mean, at that level where you're security for a celebrity, like what is that actually like? Is it cool? Is it fun? Is it like stressful? No, it's, it's got, a, I mean, it's got every, every kind of, emotion attached to it right like you're you're well, the big thing is like you have to understand that your life isn't yours yeah. in the sense that your time isn't yours anymore so if i'm working for you and you want to go fucking get something to eat at three in the morning i can get my ass up and go get something to eat or you want to go here go there take off for vegas tomorrow or take off for miami it's we're going right now and you just got to go do it right so sounds kind of, it's sounds just kind like of, it sounds kind of exciting though you're just like yeah, it, it is to the it is to like when you first kind of get into it because it's like this fast paced life you're going a lot of places. I saw a lot of cool places. I met a lot of really good people, and I'm grateful for having the job I did and having the relationship I do with the people that I work with. But it just kind of as you get older, and I'm sure you can identify with this. This is like you don't you kind of lose your. It, it's like it kind of loses its appeal in the sense yeah. that it's like very hard on you physically. Yeah. yeah. It's not that I don't enjoy, like, not that I don't enjoy the job or the people. It's just like I'm physically taking a fucking beating here because I'm yeah. not sleeping, yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm trying to exist. Like, I'm still trying to exist and be in shape and train and eat and do all this stuff, but I'm doing it on a schedule where maybe I slept three hours last night, and then I'm going to be up again for the next fucking eighteen hours. And then I'm going to sleep for three hours or four hours, five hours, and then I'm going through this constant cycle, right? So it's, it's just, it takes a it's a lot, it takes a lot of mental toughness to be able to like, per, like go through that. Yeah. And people don't, I think people see the glamorous side of it. Cause like you're hanging out with, yeah, like he's a great guy. Everyone I worked with is great people. So like yeah. you're hanging around these cool people doing these cool things, but it's just like, man, like your blood pressure's through the fucking roof and you're just not, you're not doing well. <laughs> like, do, you mind, do you mind if we delve into it a little bit? It's just, I find that lifestyle kind of interesting. So when you say you're when when you're talking about that kind of team how many bodyguards does somebody like that have or how many security i should call it? how many security guys is, does someone like drake have uh it depends on like the occasion but we're usually standard on like an average day where we're just maybe here let's say and yeah. not doing much just kind of like probably three guys okay so you guys are on all the time and wherever he's going we're going yeah so are you one of those are you one of those three that's there all the time and then they feed in other guys as you need them? Yeah, I was one of them, yeah. There's one guy there's one guy who actually physically lives with the with the principal usually or like is in really close proximity, like Yeah. And then there's other guys who are like the main guys, but like I was more of like uh an advanced guy and like uh logistics guy. So I'd be going ahead places and setting up arrivals and understanding like what we're doing, who we're doing it with, like where we're going, like all the kind of details like that, like informing drivers of locations and shit. Wow. It's just kind of broken down into like each guy has their kind of role and yeah. you just kind of go about it that way. And then once you're physically in the place where you're going, you're obviously all focused on different aspects of keeping that person safe, like wa watching exits or being close enough to him to whatever. It sounds more, it sounds a lot more advanced than I think people think. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is and it isn't. Like, I think a lot of the guys that I, the guys that I work with and we kind of took it upon ourselves to make it, like, kind of make it as efficient as possible. And hopefully, hopefully we did most of the time because thank yeah. God nothing, nothing happened on my watch or. Yeah. So, I mean, and security is like no, no issues are, is a good day, right? So boring yeah. is good. Yeah. So is if it, you're bored a lot, you're doing a good job. Is it was it the kind of thing where there was regular issues that you had to deal with, or was it because they see a team there and you guys are all big guys or or efficient at your jobs that people kind of just stay out of the way? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of the times when it comes to like unless I don't I don't have I can't speak for some someone who works for a high risk target, someone who's just like I don't know, like someone who just like has a lot of enemies or maybe has a lot of beef with people like Drake's a really solid person and he's a what you see is what he is he's a genuinely good dude so you don't really have enemies or well, people I, trying to hurt him 
maybe I can rephrase. I don't necessarily mean enemies. I mean more like maybe have like fans that are like crazy. In it. Yeah, that's what I'm, I was going to get to. Like it's more like you're kind of – it's almost in a sense you're protecting – you're almost protecting people from themselves because they kind of lose their shit. Like, yeah, and it's yeah. the weirdest thing because it could be like me and you sitting here with like Paul. Yeah. And we're like, Paul, when you, when he comes up, like, just be cool, man. We're like, just whatever. And then the person walks up, he's like, Oh my God. Oh, he's like, it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, they don't know. They just, something comes over them yeah. and it does not just specifically to who I work for. I've seen it with like everybody. It's like, yeah. They just like they like erupt into another person, right? So it's just, yeah. and it's like maybe people getting carried away in public. They kind of rush you because it's like this, like almost like these people are like a magnet. And people are rushing on them, so it's like yeah. just keeping space and yeah, yeah, just keeping an eye on for people doing weird shit. But I mean, in general, most people are pretty cool once the once the initial kind of like shock factor wears off they're kind of like oh it's just a person just like me yeah, and yeah no they're yeah. talking to me like a person too it's like yeah 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 they're like they just kind of go back to normal but are yeah. you ever are you are you ever starstruck by anybody or because you've worked with people at that level you're kind of like see them differently than we all see them or normal you know average the average person sees them no i mean i don't there's not one there's not a person i met like I can think of not to be like I'm cool or something. It's no, no, like I never really. Some people don't get I like never, that. So. Yeah, I just never really. I just view people as as who they are, and like yeah. if you're a nice person, cool. If you're an asshole, I don't want to talk to you, right? So yeah, if you're cool with me, I'm cool with you, and I might give them like, hey man, I was a fan of you growing up, or yeah, really, yeah, yeah, it's cool what you do. But um, it's just like, how did you get into Drake's circle? I mean, obviously, was it somebody you met at strip club or something like that? Like, how did you manage to get that kind of job if somebody's looking for something like that? Is it luck? I was just kind of right, right place, right time. And I knew yeah. uh, I worked for, I happened to be working part-time and doing a little bit of work for someone in Toronto who ended up knowing someone in their camp. They mentioned to him that they were just maybe, they're always looking for people because it's yeah. hard. Like the, the business of that, like bodyguarding business and celebrities and stuff, it's a very like, there's a little high turnover. There's a lot of guys just don't know how to act and they start to think that like the they're the celebrity. Mm. Like, you understand, like, basically, you're the janitor here, dude. Like, take yeah. it easy. Like, just fucking play your role and shut the fuck up. And I learned. Yeah. That just was my motto when I did it. I was just like, I'm I'm not going to be seen or heard till I needed to be seen or heard. I'm not going to be, like, making a show of myself or fucking yeah. Yeah. doing yeah. all this stuff. So it's just like a lot of guys have that, that issue where they can't. Once they kind of get this taste of like, because obviously every, everyone's focal point is on the person they're standing beside or guarding. So they're like, oh, they're looking at me too. It's like, no, they're looking through you. <laughs> they're looking past you, yeah. They don't see your ass, man. Like, <laughs> they couldn't pull you out of a lineup if you literally turned them around and said, who was in front of you? They'd be like, I don't know. I don't I just think saw the guy behind them. It's strange that you say that. I never thought that that would be a high turnover job because in my mind, I would think to myself, if you got like... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I would assume that most guys that are in that position probably came from the bouncing world or something like that. So yeah. they probably have gotten like a major pay raise and are actually doing something professional. So it's crazy to me to think that you could fuck that up. Yeah, it's crazy to me too. I've just seen it happen <laughs> a lot. So. I mean, I was just, I mean, I was very appreciative to be there and I was coming from a place where like I understood how to act and Let's hope I, I think I represented myself well and represented the person that I worked for well. But I was just like, I'm here to do a job and yeah. I'm not I'm not here to do anything else. And I'm not here to be this person's friend. I'm not here to be this person's hookup or I don't fuck all that. Like yeah. I'm just gonna do my job like as if I did a job anywhere. So I just do my job and do it well and yeah, go back to my own life. Yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> so yeah. you leave so before I get off of, I just want, I want to get off that topic. Cause I, I don't know. Do you like talking about that topic a lot? I know a lot of people probably be at people ask you about bodyguarding and. All well, I don't, that. I don't mind because like it's, it's speaking in general in in general inquiries about the job. It's like, it was a job so I can explain it, but it's just yeah. like, it's just some people like in the past have like tried to, they try and like in roundabout ways, dig for information about like maybe oh, no. shit they've heard or whatever. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, it's kind of weird in that way. Like I would never, mm -hmm. I would never betray trust of someone that I worked for. And I would never like, you know what I mean, so if he talked to me about bodyguarding, like my, my job as a bodyguard for him had nothing to do with him. Yeah. 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 Sense that I was the way I was guarding, but my I, interaction and my, my yeah. logistics of my job, it wasn't like, I was like, Hey, should I do this? Or no, no. And I, <laughs> I, I, like, I, like yeah. I, I'm sure you can gather from my questions. I'm not trying to dig into 
drinks. Oh, no, like, I'm really just curious about the whole thing because you know I bounced for a long time, like like mm-hmm. you did at strip clubs and whatever, and it it's kind of fascinating to be honest to be like. I think a lot of I think a lot of people like I'm sure you can probably first test to this too. It's like when you see you bounce long enough in different places, especially places like strip clubs, mm. you kind of see it all. So it's like it's doing the, this kind of work is like. It's a grimy fucking place. Yeah, I don't have to job. fucking deal with this fucking shithead who like <laughs> pulled a knife on me or fucking yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm not dealing with these slime fucks all the night and like you know what yeah. I mean like it's just like or like bouncing at nightclubs like yeah, you're breaking up brawls between fifty fuck thirty people and they're fucking yeah. smashing bottles. Everyone's flying everywhere. It's like it's not that right. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice relief from that. It could turn into that in some places real quick, but yeah, you're in a position now where your your focus is on protecting an individual and yeah. you need if that's going to happen get them the fuck out of there yeah and don't like, worry about literally it. get the fuck out of there so if a brawl if a brawl breaks out you're just grabbing that person getting out, out of there and you don't give a fuck about what's going on back there well yeah get out. yeah let yeah, them yeah. fight themselves to death for all they care <laughs> just get the fuck out of here right so you, you can't I'm obviously if you're like thrust into a position where you have to deal with yeah. that situation because it's all of a sudden now you're included yeah it's a little different right but it's still the objective to get that fucking person out of there yeah whether it's one person taking them out or it's all of you taking them out just get him out because yeah. that's him or her just because that's who your their safety is your number one thing right so so did there's you no need for you to be standing around and watching yeah how many people how many people of that level of importance or close to it would you say you guarded was it was it just like the one person or did you do this like for a number of people no i only ever guided him and i would only ever guard him like ever like no, no, I, I don't, if I, I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't mean at one time. I mean, like, did you have other jobs after or before no. that? No. So no, that's like, I was working for, I was bouncing here and I was working for a few individuals in Toronto who are not, not celebrities by any stretch of the imagination, but like just highly important people. Yeah. And just like needed someone to be around them. So I just did that. But like, once I got into that world and I was with him, I've seen other people in that world and there's not a fucking chance I would put my, my life on the line for them why or put myself in danger because a lot people. of that just shitty people well, there's the good people obviously everywhere right but like yeah. i i grew a very close friendship with him and everyone in that crew not just yeah. him as a person but like everyone in that crew and i'm i'm like i would feel wrong not i don't want to at all but if someone approached me is like what do you want to guard me now blah blah, blah. i'd be like no man, i'm good like let's like I'm good. Why you I think just you, wanna... do you think you have to have like that level of trust with someone, or is it like what is it that? Because I feel no, like if you're, if, the... if, if you're done working for him, would you mm-hmm. not just carry that on to somebody else, or you feel like you can't now because you have that connection? Yeah, just because I I would at the end of the day, you you know, I'm the type of person I want to I'd want to work for someone that I respect and someone that I have like an admiration yeah. towards or I have a relationship with, and like yeah. I just. I don't have the time and energy to build that again with someone else, nor do I, I want to. So, I and I, I also, I don't I like going to bed at 10 o'clock now, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. last, last question about that. Yeah. Is there any, would there ever be a situation in which like he would call Drake would call you and say, Hey, I need you to come to this place or that place where you would go. Or are you just retired from that? He could call me right now and ask me to go somewhere I'd go. Okay. That's all I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. cool. Oh, that's yeah. huge. Um, okay, so after you retire, you come back. Is it like you come back and jump into social media world, or how did you kind of make that comeback into the, the bodybuilding space? So it's all Antoine's fault that I'm. Yeah. <laughs> Damn Antoine! <laughs> He's a knack no, for like, that. Yeah, no, I was just I. It was like COVID times and I was just like, I had gotten back into, I had nothing else to do. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's, let's start lifting for real again. I had been boxing for, I had gotten down to like 260 ish. Yeah. And I'd been boxing a lot. I hadn't really been lifting and I had also been off. I wasn't steady with like my gear. I wasn't really doing, I was doing like a sloppy version of a TRT, I guess you'd call it. Like me, like, like me. That yeah. Best. Yeah, like, that's what that's what like I'm when on. I rem- like when I remembered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I feel weird. Oh fuck! I already <laughs> like every 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 four weeks or so, I'm like, yeah. ah, I think I should. Do it. <laughs> Why is the world so dark right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that was me that was oh, me fucking, that's that, why. that was me last week dude last week <laughs> so i went i did a shot like the week before the olympia 
Yeah. And I've just been putting it off ever since. And the last week, I'm like, I kind of feel shitty. And I remember, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been like fucking three weeks or four weeks. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah anyway. no, so I just, I got into like, I was, I was lucky enough during COVID time to have a gym to train at. A buddy of mine has a training studio. Mm-hmm. So I was just training all the time. And I was like, fuck it, man, like, you haven't lifted in a while. My body felt good because I hadn't been like pounded on myself like for a long time so i'm like oh, and then i remember like the first leg work i did back I was like, holy fuck what the fuck are we doing here yeah i was like i need to take something immediately yeah. <laughs> like now <laughs> i'm like i just i just hack squatted a plate in a quarter and i think my fucking knees are about to fall off <laughs> and my ass is so sore i can't sit down yeah yeah but yeah so i just got into it that way and then during the multiple like fucking ups and downs with the lockdowns and opens ups and shit like that i I just heard through the grapevine about pure and I wanted to check it out. So I, I hit up yeah. Dory and I was like, Hey man, I just like to try the, I heard you have it. I had no idea where the fucking thing was. I, I looked yeah. it up the first time and it said Mississauga. Yeah. And yeah. It was a fucking auto body shop. And I'm like, it's right. in Mississauga. It's so close to me. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I went up there and I just checked it out and I was like, like just doing my thing. And, uh, Antoine was in the middle of competing and I had seen him there a few times and I just, I basically said I hadn't seen him because he was competing all over the place. So I said to Dorian, I'm like, if there's anything I can do to help Antoine, let me know. And he's like, oh, he's been having, he's always had issues with developing his chest and his back and like kind of like his core. I'm like, well, let me know if there's anything I can do. I will. I said, I don't, because I had trained him and Noah maybe like one or two times back in the day on back. And yeah, they had been through a session or two with me. So like, yeah, you're really good understanding. So it started, I just trained with Antoine one day. Mm Mm-hmm. I was like, that's cool, man, because I was already out there. I'm going to just train him, train myself, and go home, go do my job, right? So yeah, I was yeah. like, fuck it. I don't mind. And then uh, he's the one who was like, oh, why don't we film it? And I was like, for what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are we filming? Like, no one's going to watch that. Yeah, I like, yeah, yeah. I was like, so we filmed it, and then it just kind of snowballed. And he's like, you need to get Instagram. I'm like, I really, really don't want to. Like, man, like, at all. Why, why, why didn't you want to? You seem like I a know, kind of, I, seem like a private guy, but what was it? Yeah, like I just I was on Instagram. Um, I think I got off at like my within the first like year of me doing my other job because like yeah. it was just like I'm not going to advertise my life, nor am I going to be dropping locations or sending. Oh, I was here today, like oh, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's just yeah. not what you do, right? So I was like, yeah. fuck, I'm not doing that shit. And I just I'd seen everybody who's on it, and I'm sure you've seen it. They're just like zombies, like. <sighs> I feel like I feel like that half the time. Yeah, so do I now. Yeah, because I'm fucking back on it. So I'm like, just see these people scrolling and scrolling. Like, man, I don't want that shit. But then I like, so I went back on it, and then people were adding me. So I was like, and I don't. When people write me and talk to me, people think I'm fucked. I try to like talk to everyone who talks to me. Yeah, within reason, unless they're writing you some complete fucking idiot shit. Yeah, but I'm just like, hey man, blah blah. I'm listening. Hey man, blah blah. And I'm like all day on there, like talking to people, like (laughs) trying to respond to everybody. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just like, what the fuck's going on here? You can't, man. So then it just, yeah, it's no, it turned into what it turned into. And then I was just, I, my YouTube channel just kind of started because I was, the HD stuff was doing well and it was getting traction with me and Antoine. But I, I kind of felt not bad, I guess, but I kind of felt like I didn't want to, I don't want to represent the brand with my attitude. (laughs) I mean, so in the sense that I'm swearing all the time and I'm fucking like, yeah, yeah, I'm very opinionated and I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to bite my tongue for anyone and I'm just going to, sure say it how it is i'm sure you're the same way right so i yeah, just like yeah. i'm just going to kind of like branch off so i can say what i want to say without it being like because there's going to be some fallout i'm going to fucking say some shit and i don't want it to like you guys being like jesus he fucking did it again you know what i mean or <laughs> fucking what's this guy saying like yeah. i made a fucking comment about kicking tripods and you would have thought the fucking world ended yeah everyone's fucking writing me dude well, fucking kicking a think, tripod. i'm like <laughs> well i think because hd's demographic is more of that tripod demographic. oh yeah yeah, I understand that, but it's, that's why I was like, I need to like <laughs> shift myself a bit, right? Yeah, <laughs> kind of divert the uh, divert the attention a bit. So, I'm but like, you must, but you must have been so you you kind of fast forwarded too much. So you must have been getting some traction to be able to yeah. say, you know what, I'm starting my own channel. So you were developing. I a honestly, following. I honestly, I remember looking at Laura, Laura like films for me, and I was like, no one's gonna watch this. Really, I'm like, I'm gonna get like fucking two subscribers. But this I'm is like, after, but, not... but but you had been doing this with Antoine and with HD, so you must have known. Yeah, that. but I thought, but in my mind, it's like it was like me and Antoine were kind of a, a team, and like the interest oh, so you came thought... from like okay. people like from HD were kind of like like becoming fans of mine, but it wasn't going to like carry. 
yeah by itself. this new thing where i'm by myself and i'm just yeah. like hey man i'm here now and no one else is with me so <laughs> now you gotta listen to my dumb ass all alone <laughs> like so i was just like oh man like i don't know and then ended up doing well and a lot of people have like kind of attached to it just because i think like I, and I'm sure you think on the same way. It's just like, there's no one in this, there's no one in this industry. There's very few. And there's very people in the world who are like, just unapologetically having an opinion. Yeah. And it's like, I'm just having an opinion about a workout or an exercise and it fucking irritates people to the but ends of the earth. I think it's your delivery though. Yeah. Because your delivery is very, and I like your delivery, but I can also yeah. see how it would like, I don't know. Offend, yeah. It's offend, funny. It's, a, it's so funny that you say that because every time I get an argue with my girlfriend, I'm like, what did I say? She's like, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I get I'm that. Like, what do you time. mean how I said it? <laughs> like, what if I said that really mean I thing nicely? That. What I... <laughs> That's I get that all the time, dude. Yeah. No, um I, like... I think after working with John, so I was I was a lot like you until I started working with John. Yeah. And John taught me not to speak in absolutes. He's like, mm-hmm. don't ever, he's like, don't ever speak in absolutes. He goes like, because he's like, there's a million ways to do something. Mm-hmm. So my speech has become more measured as mm-hmm. I've got, as I've gotten older because of what I learned from John. Whereas yeah, that's why I always try to make a point of like saying like, this is just how I do it. That's right. And it's not like, I'm not like saying that like, there's no other way. Like even like I have, I shit on T-bar rows. I'm not a fan of T-bar rows. I just don't like them. Really? It's but I don't tell pe- yeah, but I don't tell people if you like them to stop doing them. I'm yeah. just saying that, like, for me, I find that there's way better options for the way I move and the way I train. So, like, yeah. I'm not, like, people are like, I'm not saying, like, don't ever do a T-bar row again. Yeah. yeah I also yeah. don't deadlift, but I don't care if you deadlift. Yeah. I'm not going to freak the fuck out. Like, if you want to deadlift, deadlift, man. Knock yourself <laughs> out. Like, it's well, not, like, serious. But it's like, I talk about fucking certain things, and it's just like, I make the joke, I make the joke about the tripod thing. I put a clip of 300 after it. Oh, Leonidas yeah. kicking the dude, kicking the dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like obviously, yeah. I'm not like you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm not walking through gyms like like. But I, shit, I like, think it's your, I think it's the appearance, right? You're the big, yeah, yeah. scary dude with the tattoos yeah, I everywhere. Must be out of my mind. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking unstable. Right. You gotta before, kill people. before we go on, though, I have to ask yeah. you, what is it? Because T bars are my favorite exercise. Maybe T bars and barbell rows are probably my favorite back exercises. Hmm. Why? But I did a lot of, I did a lot of, I did a lot of barbell rows growing up. Yeah, it's just ever since I've personally had issues with with my body and different pains and different tolerances in terms of like my mobility and stuff, I just abandoned them. But like, I don't think that people should stop doing them. No, no, I think, and people I, that and do, I... I think that people that do them wrong are people that do these exercises horribly. Like, I'm sure you've seen the T bar row clanker, like the think, <laughs> think. You know what I mean? Like the clanker is guys not, like <laughs> the clanker is yeah. not as not as big a problem for me as the guy who's basically standing up. Yeah, yeah. It's the guy, the guy doing T, yeah, the T bar guy. I even say to people, I even say to people like T bar row. I think is great for what you just talked about. How how John was doing like those forced kind of like pull on negatives. Yeah, it's amazing because it teaches people how to open their back. You have no choice but to let your arm hang, let your back open. Yep. I just have a problem with like me being able to posture up the way I like to lift and be able to pull in the way I want it. Just because I don't. What about? It's not how I like to pull, right? Do you feel the same way about a supported T bar? Like, like on which a, one? Like on a supported T bar machine where you're on the on the your chest supported. Oh, that's the one I'm talking about. Oh, that's what you yeah, don't like. I don't like oh, that okay. one. Yeah. I thought you meant like the traditional. I actually one don't. Off, I actually don't mind ground. like the one where you stand over and you stand up and you can rock as long as there's like you're grabbing on like outer grip. Yeah, you know, yeah. Doing yeah. like the inner these guys are hump hump into themselves. You know what I mean, like <laughs> I get it, man. If it's but if if you like <laughs> moving weight and like I'm the same way when I was younger, I just liked moving weight. Yeah, and just feeling that fucking power, right? So, yeah, but it's just yeah. understand that, like, if we're gonna be, if we're gonna get out of that mentality now, and we're gonna be like thinking men's guys, and we're gonna try and develop this physique that's gonna get on stage and fucking win shows and like have like full development, you're gonna start having to, like you can still do that shit, but let's like add in some of like the finer yeah. details, right? Because yeah. yeah. that's not gonna happen. Like, not all yeah. of us are Branch Warren. We're not just do you, gonna. Do you think a well thought out so I always feel like a well thought out workout has a little bit of everything. So I'll like to do, how can I put it? Like if I'm training legs, when I'm squatting, I like to squat really heavy. If I'm leg pressing, I like to leg press with a lot of reps, even though it's still mm-hmm. heavy. I still like to add a lot of volume in. Um, yeah. If I'm hack squatting, I like to play with my foot position. So basically what I'm trying to say is if in any given workout, I could have two or three different things at play so I can target mm-hmm. the muscle from different 
from different avenues. Is that something you think makes sense or is it more just to pick one and do it for that workout? No, I'm the same way. I would be the, I would, I would kind of, I kind of structure my leg workouts with like people I train, especially of like, I do like this kind of banded walk stuff to start with like standing kind of glute machine to get yeah. like the hips and the glutes to fire. Yeah. This because a lot of people come into their like leg workouts without even getting any blood into their hips and like they're like rickety fucking old ships when they get going. It takes them yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's like I kind of get that like force people to do that in the sense that like it's gonna pay dividends later on in your training because like you're gonna be nice and the depth on stuff isn't gonna be bad for you anymore. You're gonna be more loose, able to play like, more pliable. Mm-hmm. So then I'll just like frame it with like I view my leg extensions and hamstring curls as kind of like primers. Like I'm flooding that muscle with blood. I'm getting sure. the joints warmed up, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick things like I'm a big fan of like pendulum squats or yeah. like like hack squats. Like on any pick a hack squat, I'm fine with it. But it's just yeah, like, yeah. and then leg presses as well. I find that a lot of guys, a lot of guys, especially our size and just people who have poor mobility, like leg press is like an issue for them, mm-hmm. just because they're the depth is hard for them. Yeah. So I would almost use that. If I know that's an issue with the guy, I'd almost want him to guy or girl. I'd almost want to start with like that full length and full rep on a, on a hack and get everything firing, and then use the leg press as a superset as more like of a pumping motion. I see what you're so saying. I understand yeah. I'm not going to get as much range, but I can really stick on the quad and I can rock. Yeah, yeah. And I can yeah. force blood into that area, and I'm shortening my range so I have more power output. Sure. I don't have to like recruit as much because I'm not going to the bottom of this range like on a hack, right? So yeah, yeah. I just play with stuff like that. Like you said, playing with angles and different stuff like that. So I find a lot of people they're they underestimate how narrow their foot stance can be. Yeah. And they don't understand like how their leg actually bends. Yeah. And yeah. that their their knees can travel over their baby toes and they can drop straight fucking down. And they're just apprehensive of it because they've never done it. And once you yeah. get them to that depth, they're like, holy fuck. And they're also like, holy fuck. That hurts. That plate the plate and a quarter feels like yeah. three fucking plates <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and that's what you want right like ideally i'd want to i'd want to lift the least amount of weight and get the maximum amount of stimulus that so that when i'm when this progressive overload thought comes into play it's like we're working out of like this lower weight and working up out we're not at four plates trying to go to six yeah i'm going to yeah, sit on muscle and i want to work that muscle like to the fucking till it doesn't want to fire anymore right but and that's you know- my idea just to ask you, like, so that that makes total sense. And this this is all probably just ego, but just let's say I have my feet an inch apart and I'm doing a, a leg press or whatever it is. Let's say, let's just pick a leg press or a hack squat. Hack squat's a good one. So, because sometimes I do that with like an inch apart and I can do, let's say, five plates mm-hmm. and I'm going ass to heels. If I open up my stance by two or three inches and I can do seven or eight plates, mm-hmm. am I going to get more growth? Or am I like, what am I like, where is your thought process on that? Cause then someone would say, okay, well, my stance is still close and I'm still on my quads, but I'm using two or three more plates. So that would stand to reason that my quads are going to be bigger, faster. I wouldn't focus on so much. Like if I do this or I do that, I would focus on like, what's my optimal foot stance for, for me to truly engage my quad. So what's most. my foot what's my foot stance yeah. that negates my hip helping me more okay i got you and like how do i how so how do i start that stance and i understand that like i'm gonna kick my i'm gonna kick my knee forward like an inch yeah and be almost in like a quarter squat and then yeah. i'm gonna let my hips sink i'm gonna let my hips drive down i'm gonna let my knee get out of the way yeah yeah so that yeah. i'm forced to drive off foot and quad yeah and if that happens to be like i like i get i play with my foot stance and like say your wider foot stance allows you to get more like those quads are fucking burning then fucking do that and if you want to like do your strips off or do a drop and go down to a tighter foot stance and understand that like maybe slow your tempo down and then yeah. understand like i'm driving more ball of foot yeah so i'm lowering the weight but i'm more ball of foot out of the bottom so i'm really forcing quad like right on the teardrop the fire right yeah so i just i would understand i would just think about it that way but i also think about like tempo so like mm-hmm. if i'm understanding that i can control my negative Mm-hmm. And I can rock out of there. How much weight am I? How much pressure am I holding here? Yeah, yeah. How yeah. much pressure is down on my feet? Yeah. So you see these guys, they take off seven, eight on a hack squat, and it's but they lift this. this not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Just drop. Let it push me down, right? So I'm, yeah. I'm responding to the weight that's the stimulus driving me down. I'm not trying to 
I'm not trying to apprehensively let that weight come down and drive out with my upper body too, right? So it's just like I'm punching the feet and driving as opposed to like mushing into that foot pad and then rocking out. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Muscle, right? So you're... We just I would honestly look at the per- way the person is doing it and just see like, like if I see you do it, it's like, okay, well, let's like, let's quick, let's like speed up the negative. Yeah. And let's let you sink to that bottom and understand there's like a little pause there and a shift out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if that elicits more foot drive and more quad drive than just strictly power out of the bottom, right? So just to give somebody at home who can't work with you in person an idea, Mm -hmm. when you're trying to gauge what's best for you, Mm -hmm. are you are you gauging that by position of your body first or weight, or is it a combination of the two? Like how can I put my body in the best position possible to lift the most weight possible? Or is it just, how is my, this recruiting the most muscle possible? This is what I want to do regardless of the weight. It would be, if I had to choose between moving weight or recruitment, it'd be recruitment. Yeah. I want to recruit more. The only Wherever they're going to put me in the position. Yeah. No, sorry. The only reason I ask is ask that. And I know it sounds like a silly question because obviously you want to recruit more, but the reason I ask is because some people would think, well, if I have more weight on the bar, then I'm recruiting more muscle. Yeah, no, I get it. So I'm like, I understand. So there's that like dichotomy is like, which one do you, which one would you advocate that people choose first? I would choose the feeling first, just because like, it's the worst word in, in the world, especially when you talk to someone who's an absolutes and numbers and the science guy, when you tell them you yeah. feel something more. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, what the fuck does feel mean? When it's like, <laughs> for every bodybuilder that's lifted a weight, yeah. you know what that is, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a drastic difference between you, I tell you to, or you do your dumbbell bicep curl, and then I'm like, okay, well, drop your shoulder and tuck your, and drop your elbow and scoop from your hand and roll yeah. up through your lat when you curl. Don't just pull yeah. this thing up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, let's see like it's a lot of the times when i do when i train people it's not like i'm like oh it's just this i have this like formula of like whatever it's like no it's gonna be like okay like you're on the hack take put a plate on let me see how you go down yeah yeah i got you i can I tell you. by where you're driving from and how you sit and how much time you spend and like in different areas yeah that you're not sitting on the muscle the way i want you to right so then yeah. i'll play with it and be like okay well let's start with a bent knee. So we're not like unlocking hip and sitting down hard on hip. We're like already relaxed in hip yeah. and and foot hips just dropping to feet. So we're okay. squeezing up through, right? So a lot of the time it's just that. It's just seeing how someone would pull something. It's usually people's initial, like you get them to pull something, you'll see from the first movement that they're wrong or they're yeah. off. Yeah, And you can tell, I've never felt my back before. It's like, well, yeah, because you're literally, your hips are like, instead of your hips being here and this is my shoulder, you're like this or like this. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever I'm pulling, I'm just leaning back. I never roll. I never rolling through and up through things and then letting my shoulders move. Right. So it's just changing that little hip position or a little foot position or like understanding, like you'd be surprised how much if you take someone on a hack, because we're talking about hacks, if you get them to kick that knee and unlock it Mm -hmm. and then unlock their hip, Mm-hmm. And they're just sitting there and quads are flaring. On the quad, have, yeah. 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 And they drop. They're like, I have no knee pain. It's like, yeah, because you told your knee to fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> you stop treat you stop treating yeah. you stop treating your knee as a mover. It's a fucking joint that bends. That's all it does. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. meant to drive weight out of. Yeah. I it's got for you. your foot, right? It's for your foot and your quad to do. I uh I had a friend tell me that feeling doesn't matter. And I've actually read it before too. Like, <laughs> yeah. like feeling doesn't matter. This is what you should do. And, you know, maybe I'm old school, but in my opinion. Tell that to your girlfriend. Yeah. Get him to tell that to his girlfriend. (laughs) No, but honestly, like, I guess I'm a little absolutist in this sense. I, if you're not feeling it, it's not doing shit. That's kind of how I felt, always feel about it. Would you? I agree 100%. Okay. Okay. I'm just. It's like the same thing. If I don't, if you don't feel it, what the fuck? You don't just. I don't just pull something and I don't feel my lats and I'm like, well, fuck, I, I pulled. So they probably grew. I don't know. But, but Mike, this is something I'm seeing more and more. Like guys are, it's, I'm seeing it written now, like feeling, it doesn't matter what you feel. This is how you should. And I'm like, wait because, a minute. Because the dorks have taken over, man. Like I said, the dorks have <laughs> taken over and they're trying to quantify bodybuilding. They're trying to make like it they a try math, quanti- math equation. They try to quantify everything in life. Yeah. It's like, that's why, like, that's my big thing is like, I understand there's guys who write good programs. I help people. I'll yep. never write a program. Why? 
because you have to see them do it. Is that why? Yeah. I haven't seen you move. If I'm if I'm confident in the way you move, and I understand that, like you're you're getting these like, and it's not like these principles of movement are so intricate that it's like for every lift we do, oh, my head is here on this, my head's here, my head's here, my hands here. It's like no, it's just like on on chest stuff. Like let's squeeze, let's retract shoulders, let's lift sternum, let's drive off. Yeah, if I don't yeah. understand if you can't even do that. How do I tell you to do a chest workout? So if you're writing a program, it's for somebody that you already have confidence, kind of knows some of yeah. your principles. And it would be like, I would tell them like, you know, it's honestly like I'm, it sounds bad, but it's like, I want you to just chase the pump. Yeah. So I want that pump to get so big and so fucking annoying that you just want the workout to be over because but that's, but you that's, can't feel anymore, bud. But that's another one I hear all the time mm -hmm. is don't chase the pump. It's not about the pump. And I'm like, I, I feel stupid sometimes. I'm like, am I, the only, <laughs> am I the only one that thinks that's the best part? That's why would you do it any other way? And the there's no other reason to be there. Well, because you have science guys that claim the pump doesn't matter. You're just trying to get stronger and bigger, and that makes that's what builds muscle. And the pump doesn't matter. I would be willing to bet that those guys have never felt the pump <laughs> in a true in the true sense of the word. <laughs> I'd be willing to put money on it. In fact, I'll train them for free. They can come do a yeah. leg session. Then I'll tell you. You can tell me that your pump. That the pump that you get, like you understand a leg pump. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. understand a leg pump. You got crazy fucking legs. Yeah. That's you can't tell me that that doesn't that isn't causing growth of some sort. Yeah. You can't, you can't yeah. tell me that that stress and that stimulus and that overload and that amount of blood being forced into a tissue to expand that tissue. Yeah. Is not causing anything. Yeah. And if you walked out of the gym with half that feeling, you'd be like, "Yeah, I grew." It's yeah. Like, no, I know I grew because my leg is literally. Like it's grown an inch since I started this training session. And my fucking, I can't bend my knee. So let me ask you, know you I mean? uh, so Mike, are we just like way too fucking old? Because the, honestly, the common themes I see now are pump doesn't matter. And feeling isn't as important as you think it is. And I'm like, to me, those are two, the two most important things. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe we're too old. When I you guess, I don't know. When you coach people in the gym, is that kind of what your coaching style is? And are they receptive of it? Yeah, like mine, it's just like they've a lot of people I train, especially newer people, are like, oh, I haven't, I've never felt this before. I've never, like, it's like I'll train a guy the other day and he did a back. He's trains back with like, he's trained back with other trainers. He came to train with me. And it's like, I just changed his hip position and where he, where he displaced weight on the chest pad mm -hmm. and understood this idea of like shoulder moving through and chest lifting and head pulling back, mm -hmm. right? And like being stiff in the back of my neck so I can mm -hmm. understand that I can roll through shoulders, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So after two sets, the guy's like back is so pumped, he's like bending over in pain because he's just never felt pain. Like yeah. he's never felt a pump in his like erectors or lower back or lat. He's never felt it. Yeah. He's yeah. like, and you're telling me that that doesn't matter because yeah. all the stuff you did before was you pulling and you doing back and heavier, for sure, heavier weight than he was doing because it was only a plate on the prime row. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, you came to you me feeling, yeah. But you came to me and you got a shit back. Yeah, and then yeah. you came to me and you felt what you feel, and who knows? Let's say in a month, two months, let's see how that back looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So science guys, like that's what I'm saying. Everyone's trying to be like, I just feel like it's like that nowadays because everyone's trying to sell people something all the time. So I, if I, I can't know. quantify it, yeah, yeah, if I can't quantify it into like, and it's also the best way to measure progress is to like understand my weight is doing this. Yeah, all yeah. the time. It's all yeah. the time till I literally either die or I get to be five hundred pounds in an incredible hole. Because there's only how far are you going with that, bro? Like, <laughs> we can only get so strong. Yeah, right. Me and you can only get so strong. That was becomes my... it becomes a matter of like we're getting better in like decimal points. Yeah. So it's like my squat got to seven twenty five, and then I put a fucking I put two ounces on the bar. <laughs> then seven twenty five and two ounces. <laughs> or like I snuck on a two and a half. Let me, me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So uh me and me and some of the guys talk about the logbook a lot, and I'm not a big advocate of a logbook. I fucking uh, hate the logbook. <laughs> Burn that thing. <laughs> I never had one. I do understand, <laughs> I do understand the premise though of I'm jotting down my weights and I know where mm -hmm. I was and I know where I'm gonna be in two months. So I do understand the premise totally. But like you said, I and the reason I never had was I'm like, okay, look, at some point I'm gonna bench four plates. 
I'm bodybuilding, so I'm not trying to bench five or six plates. And this four plates is always going to be four plates. Yep. And my workouts. You know what the you know what the four plates won't. You know what the four the difference between the four plates then and the four plates now will be Hmm. if you get better as a bodybuilder, you felt it more. Well, yeah, that's actually 100 percent true. Because I could no, you're you're right about that. Because at the end of my career, I could feel I could feel four plates. Whereas in the beginning, you can manhandle four plates. Yeah, and do what you want with it. Yeah, in the beginning, I was just trying to get it from here to here. And I couldn't really, yeah, yeah. So tell me feeling doesn't count. Yeah. I feel yeah. it now. And when yeah. I pressed my four, when I pressed four plates the first time, it was like, get the fucking thing off me. Like, <laughs> and now it's, now it's like this. Now it's, that's right. You feel the whole way through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But I think, so my, that's some, but, but I, the point I was getting to is, and look, I know there's the progressive overload guys that are going to say, look, it's, you're going to change exercises every six weeks and you got to progress at those. And is that, I always just felt like my workouts would make, I'd make subtle changes from week to week. And I would just keep trying to get better by feeling that pump and feeling that by exerting a hard workout. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, people want to argue with you. You are a fucking awesome bodybuilder, but that's what you did. But they would, and there's no, there's no accreditation to that. Like that doesn't hold weight. You know because, Because the people that are telling you that they're not you. And they probably haven't done what you've done. Well, that's not, that's not yeah. I, you know I, just, I mean, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's, 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 you did it. Yeah. And you elicited a look and a physique and a result from it. Yeah. So therefore there's proof that it works. Yeah. Whereas these guys talk a big game and don't look like shit. All of them, yeah. but they get to tell you like, Oh, I know this. And this is how we do it. Cause it's scientific. It's like, bro, man, get in the fucking gym and get a pump. Like yeah. get a fucking skin tearing pump and aim for that every time you go on every body part you train and tell me that you're not better in a year. That was I don't care of, what weight, I don't care what weights you lift. That was obviously kind of, the weights are going to go up in time. Sorry. Obviously the weights yeah. are going to go up in time. They have to. Yeah. yeah 225 yeah. isn't going to stimulate me anymore when I'm, when I'm manhandling it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to add a 25 or a 10 or whatever it is. And I'm going to try and grind out more reps with that same, awesome feeling and form and technique i have with that lower weight i'm going to try and move it again yeah that's going to cause that that progressive overload let's say right but it's like yeah. to arbitrarily say like well you got to go up every week yeah it's nonsense man it's like i'm going to try and jump higher every week well did i try and get better at jumping or did i just walk in the gym every day and, oh fuck not this time like <laughs> i mean it's the same stupidity right yeah it's just like i, I don't yeah, no, look, I, I think there's other techniques that can work. I just feel like I, they're, it, they're almost people have like demonized chasing a pump. And that's all I just wanted to kind of ask you about that and how, what your thought process I, was about that. Like so. I said, I don't, I just don't think they've ever felt one. Because yeah. if you ever felt one and you're like a real bodybuilder, which means that you're a little off because we're off, man. Yeah. yeah. Then you never want to not feel it. And that's the reason why all of us get fucking depressed when we get older. And we get off the fucking gear and like, you know, we're not doing, you're just like, where the fuck did that go? (laughs) And then it's like this in the gym. I'm fucking leaving. I don't fucking feel anything. It's not like, well, I got that weight. I got, do you not (laughs) like, here? do you not like your workouts anymore? Or do you still enjoy them? No, I like it because I, it's almost like now it's turned into a fucking full-time job figuring out what doesn't hurt. So, (laughs) but I still, I still get, maybe I don't remember what those skin splitting pumps were like, but I still get good pumps when I train. I just don't yeah, train. Too. I don't train insane like I used to, but like I still I just, enjoy yeah. my workouts. I just don't waste. There's no wasted motion in my workouts. I'm not yeah. wasting a rep. I'm not wasting a set. Yeah, I'm yeah. feeling everything. So, but but you're doing a lot. Let's of get this thing you're going. Doing a lot of warm ups. No, I mean if you can call like I just do a lot of like slowly <laughs> easing. I like I I kind of frame my workouts and like create my workouts in the sense of I know like. I know I have issues with like my shoulder. So if I do this workout, if I do this movement first, it's going to allow me to open up my scapula better. I'm going to feel more range of motion. I'm going to feel smoother. I'm not going to feel as tight when I go to maybe one arm stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like after I do two arm, some two arm pulls or whatever chest supported rows. So I just, I kind of frame stuff and understand that like I'm, I'm trying to hyper connect with a lot of stuff, like even body, even parts of mid back. I've never really tried to hit before with like, like shortening ranges, like chin positions, head positions, yeah. like so I can understand like and then like it's I'm lucky because I get to do this stuff and then I get to like 
a lot of the times try it on like high level guys. So yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah, I get to like say, oh, Quentin or fucking Antoine, like, yo, put your chin up on this and tuck your hips in on this for this one, just for this one. Or like, yeah. and now think what, like, think clawing with your hands, don't think pulling, think yeah. retracting and rolling. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, I get to see how that, like, my mind, it worked for me. So I get to visually see, like, oh, it is, it is working. Right. So mm-hmm. just fun. I enjoy that. Right. So do you I enjoy- have a fun time working out still? Do you enjoy the challenge of having Antoine and Quint who are like obviously elite specimens, especially Quint to me is probably the most potential of any bodybuilder on earth right now. Oh, he'll be Mr. O. Do you enjoy having the challenge of, you know, his only weak point is that back. So do you enjoy having that person to mold and how often do you work with him? I don't work with Quentin anymore, really. Oh, really? He's with, uh, he's with another trainer now. So I'm not a trainer, like, in person he works with another coach so he's doing yeah. his own thing okay. but i mean i've i hopefully have and i think i have and he's told me i have but like i've installed like like movement to him and his movement yeah. is good yeah so it's like it's like i don't i don't try and it's not my idea to like strangle hold or try and have my influence on people it's like you're gonna take what i show you and hopefully it makes you better yeah. And if it doesn't, then okay. You know what I mean, yeah. but I'm, and I'm also not going to step back if I did work with you, say every day and be like, I did that. It's like, no, you did that. You yeah. lifted yeah. the weight and yeah. you listened yeah. and you took the chance that it, that it works. Right. Or that yeah. it would work. Yeah. So I don't, I just, I'm happy to have an impression. I, I worked with Antoine a little more when he was getting ready for Olympia. Cause I was off my hip and shit and I wasn't really too functional. So I wasn't around much, but I mean, it's just like when they ask me for help, they know they're always going to get it. There's never a time I won't say yes to them. So it's just, yeah, yeah. you got to let people find their own way and you got to let people find their own, their own style. Right. Cause it's like, it comes down to it. Like, you know, like no one, there comes a point when no one's there to hold your hand anymore. Yeah. You got to yeah. do it yourself. And it's yeah. gotta be, if you truly love this sport, like guys say they do, then you should be trying to evolve and become your own entity within that sport and become better at training through learning from great people yeah not yeah. just like oh i listen to all i train with with coach x and i only do what coach x says and yeah it's like no you have a brain in your head dude like yeah. if that shit isn't working try it another way or mm-hmm. tell the guy yeah. i don't think this is working i want to try this so yeah i'm just a big a big advocate of like bodybuilders like taking the reins and controlling their own life as opposed to just like i'm with this coach now and this and this and i'm died by this guy and i only do this like it's like it's an individual sport. I know they've convinced everyone there's teams, yeah. but there's no teams. Yeah, We're not on a team, bro. No, I know. If me yeah. and you are in the same show, I'm trying to beat you. I'm not going to applaud when you win. Like, I will because it's like, okay, you beat me. But <laughs> I'm there to win, right? Like, Yeah. It's like, I just don't get it. Like, these teams of like, <laughs> especially with like the bikini girls and stuff. <laughs> like, well, I think. I'm on team <laughs> so-and-so. It's like, what the fuck, man? This ain't cheerleading. I think with the, I think with the athletes, like if you take, um, like let's take Dorian's team for example. I mean, Dorian had Antoine and Quint and whoever working together, mm-hmm. and I would say it is a team because they kind of understood the pecking order, like for a little while anyway. Now Quint is kind of caught up, but mm-hmm. for a little while, like Antoine was ahead of Quint and Quint was coming up, and it was like uh, they could kind of root for each other because they weren't. In direct, yeah. What also helps that they're like they're in the same space. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. if you're on my team and I live in fucking Utah and I you're here, it's like yeah, I don't teammates, really know you. Man. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. These guys get to share time. They actually live in probably the, they lived in the same house at one point, so they really were the on a team. But like, yeah, it's yeah. like I'm saying, like these, like I'm on team whatever, and this bikini girls from all over the world, like, and they're wearing their jacket. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, the fuck? Like, yeah. this guy's told you to eat broccoli three times a day <laughs> not your fucking coach like. <laughs> um all right so you come back you got your own I, i'm gonna bruise breeze through some of this because i know i've had you on for an hour and a half already so i apologize for okay. taking too much time but i got shit to do man don't worry <laughs> uh, <laughs> um you come back you start your new youtube channel youtube channel you're not sure if anybody's gonna watch and then starts to blow up because you're at like i think eighty thousand subscribers now or something like that so yeah pretty close so, yeah, so um, the reason why i didn't think it was going to blow up is kind of get back to the point that me and you talked about it's like i just thought people know what the fuck i was saying mm-hmm. so it's like a lot of people are just gonna be like yeah man no shit like the fuck yeah. like but it's just like people are like oh man i've never thought about it that way it's like what have you been doing in the gym for the last 20 years 
but I realize not everybody follows, uh, I don't know, educational channels or whatever you want to call it, just because mm. they're educational. I think the personality is sells it too, right? Like there's mm. there's a million pages you can go to and figure out how to do a bench press or figure out how to do a, a barbell press, or whatever, but it's the personality. It's like John, John Meadows built his channel like this. He would do 10 minute videos on back training or whatever. People love John. It wasn't that they mm. couldn't they couldn't find another guy to go teach them back training is because John's personality was the selling point. Yeah. So I think <clears throat> just because you have a strong personality, I think the same thing applies to you. People are like, Oh, I like this guy. He does no bullshit. He just tells it how it is. So yeah. I think that's actually what's selling people more than the information you're giving. I mean, the fact that you have good information is obviously important, but the way you're delivering it, I think is what's capturing people. Yeah. So, it was like when we were in the Olympia, uh, back in whatever, I was like, I had the I showed up at the trifecta booth just because I wanted somewhere to go to like meet people. I didn't want to walk around like because I'm just not like into crowds like that, which is fucked because I worked in that other job for so long. But like I just don't like being in like random crowds. If I know I'm going in there to like do something, I'm good. But mm -hmm. just like walking around, it's like bewildering to me, right? Like I get fucking exhausted. So yeah, it's just the people were coming up. I was just like, I was just kind of like, wow, it's cool, man. Like I'm sure you you've been in the game for so long. It's like people. You're used Dude, to it, right? Not that I'm, they ever get used to it, but it's just like it's like I was like, "What the fuck, man? Like this is pretty crazy." Like you know what I, I find was getting stopped before I even got in the expo, and I'm like, "This person's think, like, oh, blah blah," and I'm like, "Oh, cool, man." <laughs> but I'm like about, shocked. Like, what do you want? <laughs> but think about this: you were a slave to the gym and a slave to your physique for years, and didn't get that didn't get that kind of credit. Now you're just talking and being yourself, and all of a sudden everybody wants. Like, that's the part I find strange because I'm, yeah, I'm more popular now as a podcaster than I was as a bodybuilder. And I was like, mother, I'm like I gave my whole life to this <laughs> shit. You know, you yeah. fuckers cared. <laughs> now I'm just, <laughs> now I'm just talking shit. All you guys are like, you used to be fucking big, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I find it crazy because, like, at this year at the expo, same thing. I'm, I'm like people waiting like two hours to get into the podcast room, and I'm like, this is yeah. fucking, this is, this is crazy to me. Oh, that's, so, the, that's the coolest thing to me and it's like i i'm appreciative of everyone who like pays attention to what i do it's just like it's just kind of like like you said it's just kind of odd like it's just uh, to me to think like i'm just talking right like i'm yeah. not saying i'm you're also like yourself. i'm just yeah i'm just hope, and i'm just hopefully like promoting this idea that like people should like question how like what they're being told and just like put some thought into it and like really embrace that like you're not like just because you don't get on stage and fucking pose not all of us are going to be great bodybuilders it doesn't mean you can't love the sport and want to be as good as you can be you yeah. know what i mean or look as yeah. good as you can look so it's just that's the message and it's just it's cool to see that it's coming across to people because i was just like i didn't i do the same shit every day bro i'm like yeah. i get up i go to the gym i train people i come home my hand with my dogs i don't do shit so like when i go out and people are like hey man i'm like what the fuck is going on like <laughs> kid ran out so, of a roger store the other day and like was like i want your channel i'm like cool what the fuck is like <laughs> i just want to get a booster juice man like yeah. <laughs> so you got <laughs> you got the youtube channels doing well your instagram i'm just gonna show it real quick your instagram is taken off as well this is your instagram for anybody listening on audio it's big mike van wick w-y-c-k on uh on instagram and then you have your youtube channel and your tiktok is doing well as well yeah, which is just TikTok such a cesspool. <laughs> shout out to everyone. Shout out to anyone who follows me on there. It's cool, but like, fuck, man. Whose idea was like, the black and the black and white theme? Is that your idea? Yeah, well, Laura just see she films everything and she films a lot of stuff in color and then mixes in some black and white. But I just, yeah. I just like black and white. I yeah, don't look as ugly in, I don't look as ugly in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> the red complexion disappears, and I actually look like I have normal skin tone. I so, noticed yeah, of, uh, I noticed on your page it says president of my supplements.ca. When did that start? Oh, it's just a, like an online supplement store. I started with uh or I'm partners with my buddy Kareem and this guy Mike. So we just have like we have one brick and mortar and then we just distribute out of the brick and mortar and we just have like yeah. a same day delivery service type thing. When did you just start like that? a side little when did we start that fucking it was like right before COVID. Oh, okay. Like two thousand, like right before the yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole thing hit. <laughs> that's good. That's good, man. It's, so you're kind of like branching out into everything. So, how long do you see this continuing, or where's where is it go next from social media and 
you have the online store. Is there another, is there something else on down the line or you just love what you're doing? You're going to do it till whenever. I just, I like what I'm doing. I like being in the gym and training people. I, I get a lot of, I actually enjoy it. It does not like drudgery to me or yeah. I like to like help people and get them like moving in the right way. And I just, I have like a big thing. I have a, I drop merch like maybe once every three months I do like a limited drop. So is that on your website or where is that? It's only, it pops up when it's available. So I'll do it for 72 hours off the, my supplements website and it'll just, when it's available, it pops up when it's gone, it's gone. Let me see. I just kind of do a pre-order, but I've been having a lot of fun with that and sold like a a shit ton of hoodies last drop. So I appreciate everyone's support with that, but I just been having fun, like making stupid designs. Yeah. Just some random shit that carries over from like videos I've done or things I've said. So So I've always been into like that. So you're just doing like random limited limited merch you're not doing like an ongoing ongoing no eventually this year we're gonna have this year we'll have a website where there'll be like probably five or six staple pieces that are always available that people can just order kind of like maybe the most popular stuff and then we'll still have random drops throughout the year this is your this is your website you basically sell everything yeah i don't see i don't don't see any hostile stuff on here oh you gotta get it tell i'll tell mike (laughs) Mike's in charge of that. I'm not in charge of anything. But... I'm just joking, man. I gotta get uh, I gotta get my NPN numbers. I can't sell in Canada. Yet. Oh fuck, really? Yeah, uh, we, still yeah. Have, we still have to get uh, Health Canada to approve us. Don't even bother. Just stay in the states. <laughs> fuck. I know. What a, they, they don't want people to make money here. Like why they really you, don't. Why do you say that? They just don't encourage entrepreneurship. Like I know the N, the NPN numbers and all this like hoopla jumping through. Go fuck yourself. They just encourage launch in the states. They encourage, uh, well, that's why we did launch in the States, but they, like, they encourage business. They just want to take a piece. Yeah. They just want their yeah. cut. <laughs> they want their any, cut. Any chance they get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Mike. Whatever uh, you want. Just pay us this. Dude, I could uh, I could have you on forever talking about training and shit. I, I really appreciate you coming on. What um, Before you go, is there anybody you want to thank or anything you want to plug uh, before we head off? No. I just I'm appreciative for you having me on. I was like, yeah. it's nice to get a chance to talk to you. Because I yeah, never, man. like I said, we've talked in passing all the time. I also never knew fucking Paul was as funny as he is. <laughs> that dude's funny as fuck, man. How do you know? I do you saw watch, that clip. Do you watch the podcast? No, or like I see, I don't. I have I have like a really bad uh, I have a really bad attention span for certain things. Like I'm, yeah. I, can't I can't watch podcasts. Yeah, I can't watch like, two well, hours. But I watch. I see like highlight clips you guys put up and stuff like that, and different clips. And I saw the clip where I guess he got a. He has nipple pierced or something. <laughs> that was, buddy, I was fucking dying. I was dying. He that. lost. He lost a bet. Then... It's just so funny too, because like I've seen Paul for years. Like I've seen yeah. you around, and I've seen him at yeah. shows, and like yeah. he's like doing his judge thing, or like he's in a suit, and I'm like, this is just like this guy. And then like he gets on this, and I'm like, what the fuck, bro? This guy's hilarious, man. <laughs> like, this guy's he's, a fucking hidden he, gem. Honestly, the fucking best. He's like. <laughs> so so self-deprecating zero ego uh, uh, just ha- just happy he's a great great fucking guy but yeah the the there was like a two or three month span there where we, he kept losing bets so, uh, so, he, so he had to like shave his head fuck. shave his head then he had to get a nipple piercing then there was something else and he's like fuck you guys i'm not betting no more <laughs> yeah, anyway. call it quits on that man you're not doing well <laughs> <laughs> well listen if Vegas. you if you have time, uh, if you have time at all, ever, if you want to jump onto a group chat with the boys, I'm sure they'd love. I'm you sure they'd love to have you. Tell me when on. I'll be there. All right, man. I know. I'll... I've known guy for a long time. So oh, guys yeah? on there, I'll be on there. Well, yeah, guy, I've known guys. Well, well, guys from New Jersey. Is that how you know? Yeah, I met him when I was living in New Jersey. I trained at uh, Maz Ali's gym. Okay. I think it's called Body Works. He was a I have to be judge. It was called Body Works. I trained there a handful of times. I met him there. Yeah. And we just like talked and whatever. And this was before I think he even turned pro. It was like 2000 and must have been 2010 ish, 2009. Yeah. And it was like, we were just like shooting the shit. And he like, I remember he came to probably get mad at me for saying this. Probably not. He doesn't give a fuck. But he needed like uh, Aldactone or Diazide or something. <laughs> yeah. So he called me and I had like this stuff I brought from Canada. I just brought everything I had. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why I even had it. I'm like, I have it. And he's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> We're meeting him like oh you're a lifesaver yeah. man I'm like, yeah. yeah friends man. forever at come, that point that's come, it come prepared yeah, yeah. Well, he's that's a really cool. good dude though yeah we'll do one with guy and then uh maybe we'll do one with paul it'll be the four of us we'll just fucking shoot the shit yeah, i'm down all I'm right down. Mike. 
Paul's my uh, guy. <laughs> stick around for a second. I want to talk to you for a second, but everybody, thank you for watching. And uh, I'm sure you'll see Mike again soon.